I was born and raised in Mexico. As a kid, I was always running around in the forest, trapping rattlesnakes and lizards and scorpions. It's gross. That really kick-started my love for the wilderness. Here he is! Oh, my goodness gracious me. The winner of Alone <laughs> Season 9, an author. You're an author now. You have a book? And I still can't pronounce your, your, your first name proper. What's your... <laughs> J JP, you can call me JP. No, it's, that's not your name, JP. What, that, so how do you say it? It's Juan Pablo. What? Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, I, I did pretty good. Oh, all right, uh, practicing. All right, <laughs> great. Uh, fantastic. Uh, I've got to know you through through the whole uh, you know adventure that you that you li live through and everything else. Uh, and I just thought it'd be great to do a whiskey chat with you. Oh, by the way, for the whiskey chat, um, I actually had. I had this, but I, you know, that's the only tequila I actually have in the house. I don't even know if it's good or not. Is that, oh, is that good? Well, it's, it's not tequila, but it's like, uh, it's very similar. <laughs> okay. So that's why I didn't open it up. So, uh, and now that you're living at West, I thought we, we, I would just go with this. Yeah, that's perfect. A Canadian rye. So cheer, cheers on you. Love the season, season nine. And I love that you won when it's christmas and your grandma gives you socks and you're like oh thanks grandma but <laughs> in my case it's like thanks grandma i really wanted these <laughs> they're awesome it was you or the doctor the canadian doctor that I was sure for maybe because you're canadian maybe maybe both because both of you are canadian but also i just love both of your characters to be quite honest and uh, I just love the idea that you want. But before we get into that, let's start in the very beginning. Who and what got you into the outdoors? I mean, uh, you're from Mexico and I remember interviewing before and it was the idea of you would go out into the woods uh, around where you lived as a kid. Is that what got you going? Yeah, like um, I was thinking about that and yeah, it's just me, me just, doing my 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 adventures as a kid just uh like trying to hunt animals it, like basically i wanted to be that version of of those shows on discovery channel of like trapping like steve irwin like basically that that's why what what i wanted to be as a kid right so i had my my camel pants and would spend like a lot a lot of time out there um trapping basically mostly lizards and and like scorpions and things like that. Was it different then going from that um, sort of natural habitat to a different one? Or was it, it would, did you just, did you just um, sort of change your, your um, knowledge of the surroundings? Yeah, um, so I, I studied university in Calgary and it's like, a, like an outdoor leadership program uh, and ecotourism. So, I say I was kind of like a natural uh, as soon as I started exploring the area, the mountains, like the the region over there. I just uh, just started like learning so much about it, and I really enjoyed being out there. It was a very natural progression for me to just uh, go into this like northern landscape. And and that's the thing though too, because alone wasn't your first gig. Uh, in, in the wilderness uh you went on some amazing trips before this first of all you canoe awesome awesome <laughs> and uh but but you uh, you know list some of the, the great adventures you went uh, on before this uh you went on a huge uh, winter trip and a huge canoe trip yeah and, and just for the record like i would describe myself as a paddler for sure i knew i loved you <laughs> i knew it <laughs> yeah um so one of my first things was doing the Pacific Crest Trail, uh, hiking it 99 days from Mexico to Canada. That was like really got myself going into longer trips. And I did that like 10 years ago. And then I, I did a long 25 day trip to Hudson Bay paddling with my partner. And I'm gonna miss my partner, Jennifer. We've done so many adventures together. She's everything to me. So that was uh, that was like my main introduction to white water and remote wilderness paddling, uh, and I, I just loved it. I, I loved canoeing after that. 
then I when one of the trips that I did that's very relevant is I did six months in the wilderness with my partner. We brought a canoe with lots of buckets and basically like the gear that a paddler would carry on a trip. And we stayed there like six months plus plus food for sure. Um, and hunting, trapping, foraging, all these skills that I wanted to learn. And it was very difficult. Uh, I lost a lot of weight, uh, got my ass kicked by nature, lots of lessons learned. And then most recently in 2019, I did like a um, hundred day winter trip where I just, initially I wanted to canoe and, and make it like six months, but the the river froze when I started, when I wanted to start the trip, like for, for some reason, <laughs> There, there was like after abandoning the river, it was all frozen. So um, that was a no go, and I just replan everything for a hundred days. And yeah, just uh, snowshoeing with some rations and had a hot tent that I I sold myself. And yeah, basically did the whole like isolation, complete isolation, no one within kilometers for 100 days, full winter, like I started December. And then, of course, alone. That's, that's my most recent one. Well, here's the thing, though, too. So um, I knew of your other trips, because you told me about that when I talked to you before, and I thought they were phenomenal trips. But you don't have a lot of social media. Well, you kind of do now, but but you didn't really have a social media uh, following, you didn't really post anything. Nobody would n- never you know you did those trips right because of that yeah and, that, and then all of a sudden you go on alone and, and i'm guessing i'm just guessing here you didn't go on alone for because you're not you're not nar- narcissistic and, and actually look at me look at me because you weren't doing that beforehand so what was the main reason for you to go on alone it wasn't be, so you were become look at me look look at me you actually did it for what reason what why apply to that show alone so it's funny because I guess uh, some part of me wanted that like recognition too. Like I, I have to be honest here. Like I definitely wanted some some recognition because um, I there's just not many people that have done the experience that I've had, and and I just see lots of like books and lots of videos on YouTube of of people giving recommendations, and I'm like, hey, like. Uh, I wish I had that recognition a little bit, but but mainly the the reason why I wanted it was um, to push myself to to really test me in that environment, um, like no rations, very few items, and also I wanted to win. Um, that's what it was for me. I, I saw that too while, while watching the show. You really did want to win. You didn't want to win because you wanted to win the five hundred thousand. You wanted to win to win is that sort of something deep down inside you that you want to you know sort of gratify yourself that you had the skill set you wanted to prove to your partner that like the, all, all your dreams are coming true what was going on in your head so first of all i, I want to clarify that for sure there's a lot of luck involved i don't want to say like it's all skills and experience that that got me the win but um yeah, for me, it's like, I know I have this experience. I know I have the skills. I know I, I have, I'm capable of doing it. I think it's within reach. So I really want to just get it done. And it was, it was very satisfying just to like, okay, like I got it because for many years, that was something that was a bit of an obsession for me. I wanted to be in that show and I wanted to win. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. It's good to know, actually, that you said that. So the, the, what, what I really like is that you put out this book, Thrive, which as soon as I saw the title, that's amazing. It, 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 yes, it, it is on survival, but it's on long-term survival. It's not like survive for two nights, do a YouTube video. It's all about thriving. And a lot of the book deals with, yeah, skill set, but also the mental set. And I also saw that uh, on, on uh, Alone Season 9, you with mental set. You were pretty calm about stuff. Like, like your shelter was awesome and your fire was awesome and then you actually you know you you weren't going and doing what the others did you you 
you really didn't need a fire all the time. Uh, and I, I, I think that was really cool. And also, um, so I'm going off on tangent here, but, but the book itself shows that, that it's all to do with mental fortitude. So what made you want yeah. to write a book about that? It's just like the, the short version is there's so many books out there on survival and they say like all these books, they say, oh, you know, the mindset, mindset is super important. It's one of the most important things. And they spend a paragraph or one page on mindset and the book is 400 pages. And I'm like, well, you're just saying that this is the most important thing. And there you're just spending such a small, small portion of the book on this. Um, so I wanted to do different and really show people that, yeah, like this is really important. And I wanted to share, like, I'm, I'm super interested in these things. So I, I wanted to share what I've been learning throughout my life and just like really actionable um, advice that it's, it's, it's simple, it's easy to, to use in, in your everyday life. It, it actually like the book has a lot of stuff that I also believe that is just not good for survival, but also for like just your life in general. Um, There's so many transferable skills. So I think that's pretty neat that, my book can also be a, a vehicle for just these life skills, basically. Did you think about writing the book before you went on alone? Or did you write the book and think about the book after you came back from alone and then couldn't tell anybody that you won? <laughs> um, I guess both. I, I wrote my book. It was pretty much almost finished before I went to alone. Um, but after going on alone, I, I did modify a lot of stuff and actually um i shared my manuscript with with like other participants and other ex experts and they they pointed out many mistakes and like um just added some stuff gave me some ideas and incorporated all that stuff that's that's great so and how was it being on a, a show with all the other experts? Was it overwhelming? Was it a, a sort of a communal thing? Uh, what was that like? It's a bit intimidating because um, all these people are are experts and they, they know a lot of stuff like you can't know it all and these people have their specializations and and it, it I, I could feel some rivalry, but that's because I am competitive. I don't think the other participants were also feeling that like uh, rivalry. But personally, I was a little bit like keeping my my cards uh, to myself and things like that. Uh, some people were like super open and, and just sharing tips and and. But I think these this season we were all very close together. Um, I'd say like we're all friends. Um, we, yeah, like we're eager to to get together again, um, if that happens. So, were were you completely shocked that you won uh, when they came in, or were you like, oh, it's about time you came here? <laughs> um. So, but by, by day seventy, you're you're starting to think, okay, there's not many people out there. Um, I, I, I had a suspicion that maybe there's two people by day 70 just because of, of past seasons and, and the environment there is pretty rugged. But I, I, I just always kept those, those thoughts in check. I didn't want to have that expectation. And then just to me, at the same time, I'm like, okay, there's just this suspicion that maybe I'm like either the last one or there's just one other person out there and there's just just thinking you know i need to do another 20 days <laughs> so but uh the, the one thing when i was watching it like uh, your shelter was 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 solid your, your attitude was solid it was just the food intake you decided to not do that you sort of uh you drank the water but that's it w was that sort of like playing chess that you thought well if i do that then i might win as opposed to all the others running around trying to get food yeah, so many people think that I just came in with like my strategy all lined up, uh, but I I have enough experience to know that yeah it's it's nice to kind of have a plan, but I did not have really a plan. Um, 
came in coming in like i was i was i just like overdid the preparedness things like i overtrained with my bow uh i i overdid the like food intake like just getting as heavy as possible and i made it really hard on me i put a lot of pressure through my preparation but i just improvised from the start like i had no idea what shelter i was going to do i had no idea of anything because I just felt like, you know what, I have enough knowledge that I can just improvise on the fly and it's it's probably gonna be okay. Lots of cans. With this I'm gonna be able to make like a chimney and maybe a stove. I've set up the foundation around the stove. I also did the door. And that's the inside. This is my base for my pot. Not bad, eh? Yeah, that my my fasting was i just the conditions in my area where i thought like it's very difficult to walk around there's no like fire clearings and and the ice hasn't it's it's not thick enough for me to to fish yet and all these things i also had like a i had some periods where it, it was hard to eat lots of food because my stomach was probably suffering. Um, I believe it's from the starvation. Like you kind of lose. I talked to Timogen, um, and like it seems like many of us had similar things where uh, you just burp a lot. There's like lots of air in your stomach, and it makes it hard to eat. So that all that, all these things coupled, and in my brain, the smartest strategy was to do a, a fast. And you know what, like, I, I think this is not something that is shown on many shows. And people don't re don't, like most people don't know that this is um, a very viable alternative when you are in an actual survival situation, your plane goes down, like, this is a good strategy for survival. So I had no, no regrets of of showing that on, on like mainstream TV so that people understand like it's not about it. if you don't have a, a big animal like you're gonna have to to hunker down and by that time I didn't I know that I knew that the bears would be hibernating so that ticket I wasn't gonna get that golden ticket <laughs> <laughs> well was it the same thing with with your book too did you did you uh, did you think that was going to sell well because it's doing really well and, and also, too, I, I might be wrong with this, but I'm pretty sure it was doing well before everybody knew that you won. Because you put it out but like two weeks before all this happened, right? And yeah, I, I noticed on Amazon it was, doing all, it was doing well before that. And I don't think, and I might be wrong, too, but it was doing well not because of the loan. I think it was doing well because of the content. I'm not sure if I'm right with that. but Yeah. Uh, I think there's these, like, there's this interest in the survival communities and bushcraft about long-term wilderness survival. It's kind of like a, a common fantasy that many people have. And I, I think this book tries to, it's just like a, a response to that. Um, there's nothing like it out there. It's all, all the books out there are either a combination of short-term and long-term survival and it's not very clear it's all very fuzzy there's no no um the authors don't differentiate be between the two and then there's the books where are really just about short term um but nothing just specifically about long-term survival which it gets interesting because they're just many many things that no one has written about uh that are so obvious when you're in these long-term experiences well I, I find it very organic like it's basically again totally different uh which is which is what i mean i'm a writer too so i i, I you know anybody could write a guidebook i write guidebooks right anybody could write a guidebook. so why do people read my guidebooks it's because of the story that you tell and the reason why you're out there it's very organic right so and with, with survival, I find that more so for you. I mean, you've got tons of books on survival. So why is your book different? And why is it doing really well right now? Because it is different. And it's also because of your character. You're well-liked. 
man, you're, you're a good guy. <laughs> you, you've done some amazing stuff. You proved your, your merit uh, by doing trips way before alone. And then you went on alone and yeah, you know, you, you did say that, yeah, you, you love that whole, look at me, look at me, I can do this. But at the same time, you, your shelter was solid. You actually made that stove. Then uh, you almost got poisoned out. That was a good, good scene to watch. It's like, oh yeah, there might've been something in that metal I'm smelling. Uh, <laughs> but, it, but it's watchable too, because, um, and is that, is that Canadian? Is that Mexican? Is it, is it a cultural thing? Because you were more watchable than a lot of others that have been on there. That personally, that's me. I, I watch the show a lot. So, what what's your feelings on that? Yeah, I, it might be cultural. It might be that, uh, like, I I am. It's funny. Basically, I don't I don't care about like breaking the survival rules, right? Not like I I don't I don't care about fitting a mold. Um, so yeah, I feel like you know what I can do whatever I want. Um, as long as I obviously I need to be smart about stuff, right? But I was doing many things that other people were not like trying out or or just they, they felt like that's not line up with like what survival is about. And um, to me, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I think too, um, it's your upbringing, whatever culture it is, right? I mean, uh, like we all come from different cultures, whatever, but it, it was your upbringing. You went as a kid running around playing in, in the woods where you were, and then you went to Canada and, and associated with that. And then, oh my, I did not know that Zoom all of a sudden got rid of the two person up. We've only got nine minutes left. I, look, I've got a script. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh. Well, you haven't got to know me well, but you know that I, I don't keep the script in the squirrel. All right. Oh, uh, uh, three really important questions uh, to end this with. What skills and knowledge did you gain during the show alone that you'd never had going into it and you didn't think you would have actually uh, gain coming out of it? Okay, that, that that's a tricky one. Um, like without the last part, I'd say that I really um, just the fly fishing. I had never tried fly fishing, and the archery. Like I, I was okay with the bow, but really to prepare for alone, I really like went to the next level of just like accuracy and just learning all these things. But things that I didn't foresee learning in the show. Um, one of them was just. To me, it was very interesting that I being very engaged with my time out there. And when, with engaged, I just mean, like, I'm not thinking about other other things to do. I'm not thinking about anything but the task at hand. That was very satisfying. That was like, like my happy place, basically. Um, I did not foresee learning that. I think it, the challenge had to be challenging enough like i just had that on my last few weeks um once things really started to like crank up and i've been more difficult i i i reached that kind of like a peak flow experience that was a that my my lesson that i was completely unexpected for sure and that's awesome that's awesome and i i seriously did not know i had the low grade of zoom like i, I thought if you had two people you had lots of time but so two questions really quick. Uh, your friends and family back home when you were a kid, did they perceive this happening to you in your life or is it a complete surprise to them right now? For them, it's not very surprising that I've taken this path, like, um, because they know of all my adventures, like they know, um, as soon as I got out of Mexico, I was just, yeah, going on an adventure basically every, every year. But I don't think they expected me to win. <laughs> did they expect you to go to where the levels you are? Forget alone. Uh, all, all the trips you did before alone were actually super seated that. So um, was it, have you talked to them? Or like, yeah, we knew that you'd be going weird in the wilderness when you were just <laughs> two years old. We knew that. <laughs> yeah, they, they kind of do. And they tease me all the time about that. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm, I've always been the other one, the stranger. Yeah, it's like 
to me it's it's all about being in the wilderness all about all these things so i think people people understand back there what really makes me tick for sure what what's next uh you want to loan uh you write a, a, a well-selling book um what's next yeah i i, I want to take i want to continue to take the challenging path and basically just pioneer like a homesteading community that's as self-reliant as possible um yeah i just live closer to the land do some foraging hunting trapping all those things it's been my dream this this has been like my overarching dream uh since forever since i've been a kid i wanted to do this so yeah, it's on to the next dream, I guess. I'm so glad you won, and I'm so glad that you wrote a book, and I'm so glad that you're still going out there, and I'm so glad that as a kid you want to go off in the wilderness, and now you're doing it. So this is fantastic. So cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>